Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope today we'll have a good time and uh, uh, we go back to Mr. Insan. Uh, Mr. Insan is a very, very smart person and actually I have to say it. Uh, he is the top intelligent uh, uh, Abdul ever I spoke to. Um, he is like, uh, I mean, he's so sharp, the same as uh, the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him. Uh, just to remind you of the previous uh, uh, program we have from his video, uh, if you, in case you did not watch it, uh, you can go back and watch the previous video. Um, and by the way, subscribe for the channels which trans translate uh, to Indonesian language, in case you are Indonesian. And in the same time, um, it's better to subscribe to them because I don't keep videos on my channel which means this video will stay here maybe for a day or two or three and then I will take it off because I don't see anything important in those. Those are a bunch of kids trying to talk to me. I don't see someone is qualified really to keep his video in my channel. This is the whole story. So let us see, just to remind you of what Mr. Insan shown us how much Allah, he gave him wisdom because this is Allah wisdom. You know, Allah is giving them wisdom to uh, answer the questions. Grand Prize BMW for Christian Prince. Hi, Christian Prince. Hi. I will give you a, the BMW car uh -huh. as a reward if you can answer every question as follows. And this is the problem. You see, you have to answer every question, not one of them, not two. Okay. I'm glad you did not make the 99 questions like the name of your God. Okay, yeah, just to remind you, what is the questions? Uh, what is that here? Okay. Let us see. First, show me the verse in the Bible that tells Jesus is a Christian. You won't find any. It's because the name of Christian emerged for the first time in Antioch long after Jesus died. And those who gave a name of Christian were Barnabas and Paul. So here you see the stupidity. He just told us that Barnabas and Paul is the one who gave the, the name of the Christians. And then he says that this has happened 300 years after Paul. I mean, do you see the stupidity of this idiot? You just say the one who gave the name is Barnabas and Paul. And then you say this has happened in the Anisia meeting. 300 years after, stupidity. Secondly, the verse which you quoted for us, any Muslim can go and, uh, and see it. You will see this guy, he don't even know how to read. The verse saying that they were called, they themselves, they were called the Christians. Paul and Barnabas and the Christians who are there, they were called the Christian, which means people call us Christians. And when you say to us, show me where Jesus says I am a Christian, that's stupid of you. That is showing me that, uh, you know, Muslims, they have a problem. They are not using their brain. How Jesus would be Christian, you idiot? If he is a Christ, how he can be Christian? And here, I, I wanted to play this again to show you that those people, they have a, uh, they, they don't think, you know, just because they hate Christianity and they think they are like, uh, this is a, this supposedly those are questions nobody can answer. I mean, this is the questions, like this is the quiz of death. So if this is the intelligence, if this is the question which nobody can answer, what about the question which everybody can answer? So I'm speaking to the Indonesian Muslims. You ask yourself, if I call you Muhammadan, Muhammad will call himself Muhammadan? Are you stupid or what? People, they call the Muslim Muhammadan. Now you say to me, where Muhammad, he said he's Muhammad, and he's Muhammad. <laughs> and where Jesus said <laughs> that he is a Christian. <laughs> okay.
Not Jesus. Not Jesus, no. You can read it in Acts chapter number 11, yeah. verses number 24 to 26. Uh, why you don't put that verse on the screen? Christian. No, no, why you don't put that verse on the screen? I will tell you why. Because you are a, you are a liar. If you put the verse on the screen, it says that they were called. They were called. Stupid idiot. Continue. Anyway, so you see the previous video, we showed those verses. Prince, if you find in the Bible that Jesus is a Christian, see, it's a new serious BMW will be yours. You know, the most concern I have, in case you are married, I feel sorry for the women who married her. I mean, how a woman she will end with someone like you. How a horrible life. So, this is what you did. You went for a week, disappear, and now you come back with such a question everybody is laughing at. If this is after long thinking, then what is a normal conversation you do with your wife is going to be? I think he will put in the front of her a tomato and he will say, Oh, show me one place where tomato says I am tomato. Will they call her tomato? She did not call herself tomato. Hmm? Is that your deep thinking? I will not be surprised. If you come with a question tomorrow, says, Show me where Muhammad, he said, I am uh, not Muhammad. Hmm. Show me. What about you show me your God, so we can laugh together about a God who have a leg, he have, an, he have a shin, he have five fingers, he have two eyes, yet he don't have ass. Huh? According to you, Muslims. But actually, according to the hadith, actually, Allah, he have us. And I can show it. I can prove it. Why you don't ask your God, Allah, to show himself too? You know, show us, Allah, where is this Allah? You Muslim, you worship someone, his name is Allah. Who is Allah? Who is this Allah? You don't even know what the word means. You don't know where he lives. Muhammad himself never spoke to him. Have you, have you ever heard of a prophet? His God don't want to talk to him. He sent him a delivery pizza guy. You see, when we come to serious questions, they, they have no answer. But Muslims, they are very good in silly questions. Show me where Jesus says I am a Christian. Silly. Second. Nearly all Christians, as well as you, go to the church on Sunday. My question is, which verse in the Gospel that shows the commandment of Allah or Jesus to go to church on Sunday? If there is, please choose a new Guys, uh, well, show me where Jesus says go to the church on Sunday. Uh, show me. Can you show me where Jesus said so? Uh, go, uh, okay, can, I want to ask you the same question. Can you show me where Jesus says in the Quran, don't go on Sunday? Can you show me a verse in the Quran saying Jesus go on Friday? Can you even show me your Allah saying that you should pray only on Friday in the Quran? I mean, this is how silly they are. The Bible says that all days belong to God. And our God is out of time, you idiot. Do you think God, he can really for Saturday or Sunday or pray for him when you want to pray? Go pray. Go to your closet. Every day you pray. It's not only in a day. Every day. Even the Quran proved to us, and we showed before, that Muhammad was practicing the Jewish practice. The Muslims observing Saturday. If we go in the Quran, you will find the chapter of Al Juma. Hmm? What happened in a Friday? Juma. Because the Muslim they were observing Saturday. 
as their day of worship. And the market, the bazaar will close. So Muhammad told them in chapter 69, 62 verse number 9, when you call for a prayer in Friday, leave everything in your hand, your business, your trade. Why? Because Saturday is coming and then all businesses are clothing. And as you see, it's in front of you. So even your God never says to you, today, the Friday is the day of a prayer. Your God says to you when it's Friday, stop sitting and buying and come. Why? Because Saturday is the off day for the Muslims. And Muhammad himself, he used to fast Saturday and Sunday. If we go in the Hadith, we will find the following. Do you see it? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fasts three days and every month. In the same month, he fasted on Saturday and Sunday and Monday. In different hadith here, it says he fasted in Saturday and Sunday. Read it. So question, why Muhammad was observing Saturday and Sunday if they are not from God? Any Muslim can answer us? And then Muhammad, when he decided that the Christians, okay, they will not accept him, even if he fasts Saturday, even if he fasts Sunday, it doesn't matter what he do, they will not accept him. He is a fraud, he is a liar. So he decided to stay away from them. Do you see it? And here there is a serious question for the Muslims. Very simple one. The Messenger of Allah used to fast often on Saturday. What is a Friday? And Sunday. How come Muhammad did not notice that a Friday should be there? Why he skipped Friday? Any Muslim can tell us? If those are not from God, you see, I'm going with this idiot. He is trying to say to you, Muslim, that Sunday is not for order from God. Okay, I will go with you. So why Muhammad was fasting Saturday and Sunday? The answer is very simple. In the beginning, Muhammad was trying to be a Jew. Then when the Jew rejected him, he tried to be Christian. When the Christians spit him, then he became um, an, the Arab pagan again. He go back to the Kaaba. This is why in the beginning of his life, Muhammad was praying in the direction of Jerusalem. Did you ask yourself why he was praying all his life in the direction of Jerusalem? What? He forgot about the Kaaba? Why he was fasting Saturday and Sunday? He forgot that Friday is the day of Allah? <laughs> Stupidity is amazing, right? Stupidity is amazing. Uh, a Muslim from Indonesia, he's saying to me, that sh just to show you, those, uh, this guy, he used Google Translation. He says, you are wasting your time answering a false Muslim. Uh, see, see uh, uh, Insan, even the Muslim from Indonesia, they call you false Muslim. Here we go. Good for you. Uh, Mr. Uh, Al Arziki, why you don't call me as long you are the real Muslim? He is the false Muslim. Are you the real Muslim? Are you? Did you have a wife? She is six years old like your prophet to prove to me that you are a real Muslim. Do you wipe your ass with three rocks like your prophet to prove to me that you are a real Muslim? Do you take a shower with dead dogs and women blood from period like your prophet to prove to me that you are a Muslim? You are not a real Muslim too. None of you do what Muhammad do. All of you are a bunch of a fraud. Now, so why Muhammad is, if, sat if Saturday is not for Muslims and Sunday are not for Muslims, why Muhammad is fasting Saturday and Sunday? 
And then how later he discovered that this is the holiday of the Christians and the Jews, and he called us polytheists. He did not notice all his life that this is not right. Allah did not send him Jibreel to squeeze him and say, Muhammad, you are an idiot. Why you are fasting in Saturday and Sunday? Where was Allah all this time? And who is the one who told him to fast in those days? Like why he chose them? I want Indonesia Muslims to ask this Abdul who have no idea what he's talking about. You will see, he will, you see this guy, all the video I made for him, he skipped them. He saw nothing. He just make videos. Christian Prince. Hi, I have a prize for you, 5 BMW. I don't like 5 BMW. I like five camels. So I can give you a drink of a fresh camel urine every day in the morning as the Prophet he ordered you to do. Prove to us that you are a real Muslim, Mr. Insan, and I want you tomorrow to make a video drinking camel urine. Do it. Every time you go on video, I want you to drink camel urine. Prove to us that you are really following the Sunnah of the Prophet. You don't. You don't. Do you? And the one who is coming to complain, you are not Indonesian, I don't know who you are, but get out of here. We have no time for kids. So, uh, as you see, Muhammad himself, he observed Saturday and Sunday. The question, why? And why Allah, he made Saturday the day he cursed the Jews because of it. And so why Muslim don't follow Saturday? Allah, he made the Jews pigs and monkeys for not praying or let us say uh, obeying Saturday order okay Allah make them pigs and monkeys and that is in the Quran so why Allah don't make the Muslims pigs and monkeys in the Quran for not observing Saturday Sabbath huh no answer stupidity Chapter 2, verse number 65. Chapter 5, verse number 60. Chapter 7, verse 166. All of them speak about what? About breaking Sabbath. So Allah, he cursed them and made them pigs and monkeys. So this day obviously is so important for Allah. So how come Allah, he changed day? He don't want Saturday no more. He want Friday? What happened? And if you remember, when we went to the Hadith last time, Muhammad, he proved to us that Allah, he took vacation in Saturday. His vacation start in Saturday. Read with me. Who said that? Muhammad. Are you going to say Muhammad is a liar now? This is your prophet who have no prophecy except stupid things we laugh at saying Allah the exalted the glorious created clay in Saturday and he created mountain in Sunday created trees in Monday and he created uh, things entirely labor Tuesday and he created light in Wednesday and then he caused animals to spread in, th in Thursday and he created Adam after Asr in Friday okay Allah finished work now so what was his first day vacation Sabbath. Do you see it? Your God Allah, according to the, the funny Muhammad, look, and Muhammad, by the way, he proved again that he's a false prophet because those are seven days. The Quran says Allah created the earth and the heaven in six days. Ah, the Muslim will say to you, he said he created the earth and the heaven, but he did not uh, put uh, Adam there. Hmm? So what is the last day of a creation for Allah? It was Friday. What he did in Saturday, he is off. Bye-bye. The Quran says he went in the top of his chair. So those stupid ones who claim that Muslim, they believe in the same God of the Jews. And they ask us why you go in, in Sunday. For us, it's very simple. It's Sunday or Saturday, both are observed. Who said that the Christian don't observe Saturday? Who told you that? 
We worship in Saturday and we worship in Sunday and we worship in Monday. Any day is a good day for God. The Bible says it clearly, any day you designate for the Lord is the day for the Lord. And Sabbath means a day of rest for the Lord, not a Saturday necessarily. This is why Jesus said, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath. And there's many people here, even between those who call themselves Christians, they are naive, the same as the Jews, the same as the Muslims. They think that God, he ordered us to observe days because God, he care for that day. No, he don't. He is out of time. Our God is out of time. Time is only for a human. When God, he says to you, day, this is for you. So you understand what he's talking about. Otherwise, time is, is not part of God. Because, you see, time count only when you are a person aged. You know, when you age, time and age, they go together. You age. So you go in time, you go in aging. God is always living God. And he time don't count for him. He's eternal. You know, when we say eternal, what does that mean? It means there's no time. So do God really care for a day? It's called Saturday. No, he cares for you. That's why Jesus said Sabbath was made for the man. The man is greedy. He want to work 27 days, 24 hours, 7 days a week to make money, abusing even his own servants. And at that time, they're slaves. So when the order to observe Saturday is to observe a day of rest, Sabbath mere rest. And that day is rest for you and your soul and your servant and your family and rest for you so you can thank God for the gift he gave you. Otherwise, God will not rest in Saturday, my friend. The, the Muslim, they say to you that the Bible says that God, he created the earth and the heaven and he rests in Saturday. It's rest, it's Saturday. He's using Sabbath. Rest means nothing more to do to be done. Everything is done. Otherwise, God don't get tired. A Muslim will say to you, will Jesus get tired? Because this is in the flesh. But Jesus himself, he fasted for 40 days. Can a human being fast for 40 days without food and water? You Muslim, you fast for a few hours a day and you stay the rest of the day. And you wake up to eat. And you claim you are fasting. This is not fasting. Who can fast the fast of Jesus? 40 days with no water and no food. Can you? We cannot. So here we notice that Muslims, they are trying to make you believe that Jesus is no one. Jesus did not say he is God. This is the whole purpose. Jesus is no one. Jesus is nothing because they want to worship Muhammad. This is why we showed you the hadith where it says, where Muslims believe that Allah, he said to Muhammad, that if not you, Muhammad, I created nothing. So why Allah, he created mankind? He created mankind to worship, but worship who? Allah? No way. And we can prove it easy. If you remember this verse, why Allah, he created the human and the genie? For very very simple reason, supposedly to worship. But the Quran does not say to worship who. The hadith confirm the Muslims worship who? They worship Muhammad. Uh, in chapter 51, verse number 56, it says, I did not create a human being and genie except for what? Except to worship. But look, do the Muslim worship Allah or worship Muhammad? The Muslim, they will say for sure we worship Allah. But what is the purpose of a creation according to Allah? Muhammad. Let me remind you of the hadith we showed you before. Give me a second.
الحديث This is sunnah.com, sunnah.org, sorry, Muslim Sunni website. And this website explained to us why Allah, he created you. Remember the Quran says, Allah, I created you nothing but to worship. This is the purpose of the creation of a human being. Allah is a whole lonely, he want to have fun, and he wanted to create some people to worship him. But if you read with me here, the hadith, it says, a person is asking question about this hadith, is it correct? Where it says, that Allah, he says, the reason for the creation is Muhammad? The answer is, by the scholars, not by me. Those are your scholars. Not like this potato uh, insan who do not know how to say his prophet name correctly. The answer, indeed, the prophet of Allah, Allah pray for him and salute him, is the reason for the creation of Adam, alayhi salam, and the universe. The Quran says, I created you only to worship. Okay, to worship who? The answer is here. The reason of the creation of Adam and the universe <laughs> is Muhammad. If the Prophet Muhammad, if the Prophet of Allah, Allah pray on him and salute him, was not to exist, then the earth, the arsh, the chair of Allah, the kursi, the lawh, the, 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 the uh, Allah have a tablet, galaxy tablet, and the pen, and the sky and the earth and the heaven and the hell and the trees and the stones they will never be created do you see it and now we knew that islam worship muhammad you see muhammad is so evil to the point he did not say i am god worship me but he claimed that the whole world is created just for his sake Do you see it? He made a verse saying that I created a human being just to worship, but to worship who? If Allah himself, he is exist, what is the purpose of Allah to exist? Read it. What is the purpose of Allah to be exist? Is to be a toy for Muhammad. If not Muhammad, there is no Allah, and because Allah, he is just a servant. Why Allah created the universe? For Muhammad. Why he created Adam? For Muhammad. Why he created the sky? For Muhammad. Okay, even his chair. Why Allah have a chair? For Muhammad. What does this have to do with Muhammad? Why the chair of Allah, the, the throne of Allah, is just for the sake of Muhammad? You tell me. Who is going to sit on it? Do you see it? Who is going to sit in this chair? For Muhammad. The sky, even the pen of Allah created for Muhammad, even the tablet of Allah created for Muhammad. And then he continues saying the sky, the earth, the heaven, the hell, the trees, the stone, even the stones are created for Muhammad. I read here with me. Hadith al-Hakim in the, his Mustadrak. And he has given you the reference. Read carefully. This is not me. This is your Muslim translation. The Prophet of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah said, Allah said, who said Allah? This is not Muhammad saying, this is Allah now talking. When Adam made a mistake, he asked for oh Allah, I ask for the sake of Muhammad to forgive me. What? Adam is asking Allah to forgive him? For the sake of Muhammad. I'm trying to make the text, you know, good size enough for you so you can read it. And look what happened here. I mean, have you ever heard of madness like this before? And they say to you that we worship God. You don't worship God. You worship Muhammad. You're God himself. You worship Muhammad. Because Allah is the toy of Muhammad. He used him just to fool you. So, Adam, when he opened his eyes, sorry, when he made a mistake, he looked at the sky and he said to Allah, please forgive me for the sake of Muhammad. <laughs> and look what happened here. 
Allah said, Oh Adam, how do you recognize Muhammad when I have not yet created him? How the Muslim they say to us, Allah is all knowledgeable. If Allah is all knowledgeable, he do not need to ask this question. As you see, Allah was shocked, like what? What 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 you saying? You are asking me to forgive you for the sake of Muhammad when I did not create Muhammad yet. How you know? Allah asking Adam. Adam said to him, Oh, oh Allah, <laughs> you don't know what I did, huh? <laughs> you don't know what an idiot. Oh Allah, when you created me and blew into me the spirit, I lifted up my head and I saw written in the arsh. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Allah. Like what? Adam, when Allah was creating him, he lift up his eyes to the to the chair of Allah, and he saw in the chair of Allah the name of Muhammad Sayyid and the Shahada. Allah he wrote the name of Muhammad on his chair, all over the chair. So Adam continues saying. Oh, sorry, we click a, a link. So Adam, he says, so I got to know that you would only join your name with him. Do you see join the name with him? Muslim, do you see Muhammad saying, this is Muhammad saying what Allah said with the conversation about Adam and Allah. You Muslims agree that Muhammad, he joined his name with Allah. Actually, you are saying that Allah joined his name with Muhammad, which means the name of Muhammad is more important than the name of Allah. Read carefully. So I got to know that you only join your name with him who is most beloved to you. Mushrikeen, the Muslims are Mushrikeen. They have two gods, but the most important God is Muhammad, as you see. For Allah himself is exists for the purpose of Muhammad. What is the duty of Allah? You create things for Muhammad, read it. Allah said to him, O oh Adam, you spoke in the truth. Uh huh. Allah, He confirmed that. Indeed, Muhammad is more beloved to me than anything. And when you ask for, uh, me for his sake, I burden you. If Muhammad was not to exist, I would not create you. <laughs> and those silly Muhammad, and they are coming to us and say to us, so as when Jesus said, I'm a Christian. You see, they are so good in silly questions. When we ask serious questions, those are serious. Those questions will make you understand clearly that Muhammad is nothing but a fraud. Muhammad is subjugating God to be his toy. Why the earth is exist for me? Why insan is exist? By the way, insan means a human. I don't know why this guy is even calling himself insan, how stupid it is. How in the world you call yourself instead? Like what, like what? Your mom, when she gave birth to you, she was expecting a puppy? You could not find a name different from the name Insan? Human? Okay. So, why Insan is exist? For Muhammad. Why Indonesia exists? For Muhammad. Why your mother, your sister, your daughter is for Muhammad? Why the rat is exist for Muhammad? Why the pigs exist for Muhammad? Why the chicken exists for Muhammad? Do you see how important Muhammad is? Why Trump is exist for Muhammad? Monica Lewinsky for Muhammad? Travolta for Muhammad? Rambo for Muhammad? All of them that exist for Muhammad. Why I have a sewage in my house for Muhammad? Why I have a trade seat for Muhammad? This is your book. And you are asking me where Jesus said he is Christian? The most silly, my, my friend, a person asking me, is this hadith accepted by Muslim? Don't you see they are answering and shame for sure, indeed. And you are saying accepted. This is sunnah.org. And you are asking me if this hadith is accepted? Don't you see they said indeed, indeed the prophet of Allah. Allah pray, Allah even pray for him. Allah pray for, not two. Allah pray for him and salute him. Is the reason for creation, you asking me, if this is accepted? 
So why they are saying indeed, and then they call those hadith if they are not accepted? Hadith number two. Allah revealed Prophet Isa. Here we go, Isa. Look at Isa what he said. Alayhi salam, you will notice that Muslim when they say Muhammad, they say sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because Allah pray for Muhammad. You see that he worship him. But when they say Isa, they say alayhi salam, peace upon him. They don't say Allah pray for him and salute him. No, because Allah pray and salute only for Muhammad. Uh, so Allah said to Isa, O oh Isa, I have, have faith. Huh? Allah saying to Isa, have faith. Huh? Isa don't have faith. Okay, in what? In Muhammad. Allah, he said to Isa to follow Muhammad? Yes, brother. Do you see it? Allah, he said, oh Isa, have faith on Muhammad. And order your ummah, which means your nation, to do the same. If Muhammad was not to exist, I would not have created Adam, nor I would have made the heaven and hell. <laughs> so Allah is teaching Isa, like Isa, Isa, Isa. I want to tell you something, brother. If not, if not Muhammad, you Isa are not exist. Adam is not exist. Heaven and hell is not exist. All of you are exist for one purpose. It's called Muhammad. He is my cutie. Do you see it? For those who are asking for reference, my friend, always you can find those reference easy. You see, I'm showing you a screen in the in the in the in the in the front of you, right? So you can just right now search search in YouTube. If not you, Muhammad, between two brackets, just make it as it is, and you will find the hadith. Just search like this, very easy. Or laulaka, just search for this, you will find the hadith. Learn always how to get my reference, especially I'm showing you in English. Just copy a few words from the screen. Don't try to highlight the video, you cannot. Just type in your Google the same exact words as you see and you will find the hadith. Anyway, the admin is posting for you the reference. But this is for those who later want to watch the video. So, as you see, the purpose of a creation is Muhammad. Right? So, for sure, brother, for sure, brother, Allah created everything for the sake of Muhammad. And this guy is asking me where, where Jesus says to you, go on Sunday. This is the important for you now. Jesus says to me, my friend, when you want to pray, go to your closet. Why? Because you don't want me to be hypocrite and announcing to everybody I need to pray. Because simply I'm a holy man. Closet, closet, you know, it's not a church, it's a closet. So the day is not important for us. Every day is a day of the Lord. All of us, we are created by Him. So our time belong to Him. It's not the opposite. So every day is a day of the Lord. Every moment is a moment of the Lord, especially if you designate yourself that this moment for the Lord. Like right now, it's not Saturday. Actually, it is Saturday today. Let us say today it was Monday. And I say now this is the time I'm going to pray to the Lord. That is my Sabbath now. idiots they are the same as you know somehow the muslim by the way very very close to the jews and they are uh, uh, you know like uh, they are like you know they take words and they make it concrete as if god really he cared for a day god he cared for the man for god he loved the world he sent his only begotten son when jesus was helping a person who need help in saturday the jews they said to him oh you are talking, you are helping somebody, he is, uh, this is Saturday. Jesus said to them, this is Saturday made for the man, you idiot. It's not the opposite. So you must then you follow rules because you have no religion. You follow rituals because you don't have a spirit of worship. For us, all those things, they mean nothing. Many, they will say to me, Lord, Lord many and jesus will say to them depart from me i do not know you why because they are like you you speak too much about the lord but you do not know him you think god is about a day 
You see, this person, he ignored that his prophet, he was a criminal, a thief, a rapist. And now what he cared for, show me here. Jesus says a pray in Sunday. That's it. This is what is important now. It's not important that Muhammad is raping a child. She is six years old. It's not important that Muhammad had to ask for Muhabiba for the hand of Muhabiba when she was an infant. It's not important that Muhammad is going around and cheating with his own son wife. It's not important that Muhammad was accused by the Muslim that he stole an underwear. It's not important that Muhammad have no witnesses for anything. And Jibreel come to him. Jibreel he squeeze him. Jibreel he go. Jibreel he come. Nobody see him. It's not important that Muhammad he claimed that Jibreel looked the same as his boyfriend. Dahil Kalbi is not important that Muhammad he went to the seven heaven and no witnesses and he came back from the seven heaven and no witnesses and he went to Jerusalem and nobody saw him there and he came back from Jerusalem and nobody saw him there and now he's saying show me where Jesus says praying Sunday do you see the stupidity this is what they, what this is what it's important for them How Muhammad became a prophet? This is a good question. Show me a prophecy of Muhammad become true. I challenge any Muslim to show me one prophecy with die laughing. Like what? Like Muhammad saying that the Roman they will be the majority of mankind? Huh? The Roman? The Roman they will be the majority of mankind? How Muhammad he says such a stupid thing? Huh? From the sign of the judgment day, let me see the hadith. Uh, <clears throat> give me a second. Let us see this one just to show you how, how what kind of a person we are talking about. Uh, this hadith. I'm just trying to find it for you in English. Maybe we can find this one because there's many ways this hadith is written. So you need to find the one which is exists in this website. This website doesn't have all the books of hadith. Here we go. Let us see. Hmm. Having difficulty to find, we I, I'm sure it is here in this website because before we show we show it to you before if you remember. Um, to see. <clears throat> okay, let's see. I will change one word in the hadith. There's a there's a statement where it says instead. Maybe now we can find it. Uh, 
Uh, here we go. I heard Allah Messenger saying, the last hour would not come, would come, when the Roman would be the majority among, amongst the people. <laughs> the president of Italy, he made a speech just about two months ago saying uh, he's asking the Italian citizen to have more kids because the nation is shrinking and they are not even 60 millions. But according to Muhammad, the Roman number will become the majority of mankind, not the Indonesian. Do you know how many Italy Indonesia can make? But according to Muhammad, the Roman will be would form the majority among the people. This is a prophecy of your prophet. It's like saying Switzerland will become the biggest country in the world. But Muhammad in his time, the Roman, they were the biggest empire. So Muhammad, he never thought that this empire will shrink and shrink and shrink and shrink. So he thought there's going to be the biggest empire in the world. Do you see the stupidity? Let us continue with this guy. Serious BMW for you, Prince. The third, Christian Prince. You worship Jesus as a God. As God, you idiot. Not a God. Stupid. A God means there's many gods. We worship only one God. We worship Jesus as God. Yes. Okay. Don't you? Mm. Yeah, we do. My question is, in this verse in the Bible, mm. that shows Jesus said, I am Allah. You are Lord, so worship me only. Okay, that's very easy. First of all, Jesus will never say he's Allah because Allah is the devil. Allah is just a devilish name used by Muhammad to control your mind. So there is no way Jesus will say uh, he is Allah. That is a stupid of you to say because we Christian we don't believe in such a garbage. His name is Allah. Secondly, when you say to me, show me where Jesus said uh, he is God, worship me. Well, if I show you, are you going to accept? The answer is no. So why you are you asking me to show you? Because simply you are just an idiot trying to, for, to make the Muslim believe that Jesus did not say he is God. Right? That's the whole idea. So let us go to what Jesus said and see if Jesus said he is God or not. And then everybody will laugh at you. Huh? This is the Bible. And you are the one who quote for me this chapter, by the way, uh, if you remember uh, 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 10 days ago. Mark 12, verse number 29. The first command Jesus said is to worship what your Lord and you are the one who says, says, our God is one Lord. So this is a statement from the Jews. Oh, you Israel, your God is a God. So what is the first command? Is to worship one God. But who is this one God? Jesus, he answered. If we go to John, chapter 10, we go down here. We find Jesus saying, me and the Father is one. So you worship only one God and me and God is one. Do you see it? And the Jews, because he said that, they took stones to kill him. They throw stones at him. They want to kill him. <laughs> and look what the Jews, they said to him. Jesus said to them, uh, you know, then the Jews, they took a stone and gained to stone him. And Jesus answered them, many good work I have showed you, many signs, miracles from my father, for which of those work you stone me? The Jews, they said to him, saying, for good work we stone you not, 
but for blasphemy and because that though being a man make himself God do you see it <laughs> and Jesus said to them is it and the law it says that you are God <laughs> so this idiot he said to me where Jesus says I am God can Muhammad say me and Allah is one no so why how come you are blind you don't see it why who is Jesus if he is just a man as you see even the Jews they said to him you are just a man and you claim that you are God and Jesus did not say I did not say I'm God he says is it it doesn't it say that me and the father is one in different place one of the disciples of Jesus said to Jesus why you don't show us the father and that said show us the father even his disciple he said to him I am with you all this time and you did not see me the one who saw me he saw the father now is he going to accept no he will say to you we don't believe in the Bible <laughs> Uh, we have a Muslim here saying, so you reject uh, Old Testament? What? Because Israel denied other mission? Hold on. Let us see here just to show you when a Muslim he tried to answer what, what happened. Uh, Muslim Papa, he's saying, so you reject Old Testament because you find the Israel denial and other mentioned Allah or Ilah as God Hebrew, even the man on the cross supposed Jesus about Eli Eli anyone understand what this guy is saying first of all who said we reject the Old Testament you idiot who is the donkey he said that to you secondly the question is for you where we can find Ezra who is the son of Allah in the Old Testament if we cannot find him that means your prophet is a scam why we should ac accept that he's a scam because you see the Old Testament is a book of the Christians and the Jews and through history the Jews and the Christians they were not friendly to each other the Jews they don't like the Christians for they are making their own nation disappear most of the Jews became a Christian already so why the Christian and the Jews they would agree to corrupt a book that is the most stupid thing ever it's like saying United, United States of America and Russia and Soviet Union and China they agree in something and they are enemies supposedly or fighting each other this is the most stupid thing. So when your Quran says that Ezra is the son of Allah, we need to ask the Muslim, okay, where we can find this verse? Who is this guy Ezra? And where we can find him in the Old Testament who was the, the son of Allah? And when Jesus said, Eli, Eli, you idiot, he was quoting from the Old Testament. There's a prophecy about Christ that he will say, Eli, Eli. So he said it's completed, that prophecy completed. Ignorant. And look how they fabricate stupid things we never said. So you reject Old Testament? Who said we reject Old Testament? You see, this is why we cannot trust a Muslim saying anything. I mean, imagine they are saying to me in my face, I reject the Old Testament. Do you believe it, how big liars they are? When we said we reject the Old Testament? You cannot trust a Muslim saying, even if he, if a Muslim he fought, don't trust that this is his fault. It might be the fault of the genie. I can show it to you from the hadith. Huh? Why you reject Allah when Old Testament confirmed the word Allah for God? Where, 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 okay, where the old word Allah in the, in the, guys, this is my challenge for this Abdul. Where we can find the word Allah in the Old Testament, I'm waiting for you. He said he can find the word Allah in the Old Testament. Can you show me the verse where it says Allah? Ili Ili is Allah? Ili Ili Allah? <laughs> Ili Ili is Allah. What happened to your God? He lost his name? Where is Allah in the Old Testament? I'm waiting. And the funny, those Muslims, they say to you, the Old Testament is corrupt, the New Testament is corrupt. And they say that Allah is in the Bible. Muhammad is in the Bible. Madness. 
They're drunk. Right? <sighs> All right, we continue with this uh, Abdul because he's funny and he is, uh, you know, we are just having fun actually. We are not uh, answering. We are just having, he's not worth even to be called answering. If there were a testimony of Jesus like that, yeah, there's many. Here we go. I will add another new BMW for you. Okay, where is my BMW now? I just showed you Jesus saying, Me and God is one. How clear Jesus can make it more than this? How clear? I mean, look at that. Look at those thieves, thieves of dignity. They are thieves of dignity. If a person he says to you, Me and God is one, isn't he saying, I am God? How he can be me and God is one? You tell me. If I say me and Allah is one, does that mean that I am Allah or not? <laughs> if Jesus says you worship your God alone, and then he say to you, me and God is one, how more we can make it clear? Still words. So show me what Jesus says. I was in God worship me. Good print. I treat you. I treat you one verse in the Bible. It said that Jesus said I'm God worship me. Uh, 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 Zach okay, forget about Jesus now, you know, in the Bible. Me and Allah is one. Christian Prince, I will kill you because you just say that you are God and this is again the blasphemy. Oh, so if I say uh, me and Allah is one, you will kill me? Exactly. But if Jesus says he and God is one, is, a, is, not, is not saying he is God? <laughs> The fourth, you are convinced that the Bible is Allah's words. No, we are not. We don't believe in Allah. Allah cannot even make one word from the Bible. Who said to you that we believe that Allah is the one? When we answer you, Muslims, we showed you what is in your book. Your book saying that the Bible is the word of Allah. It's not I'm confirming it. What's wrong with those people? All this time, you don't even know what Christian prince teach. Christian prince teach that Allah is a joke. We don't believe in Allah. We laugh at Allah. He does not exist. It's a fabricated name by the devil, which his name is Muhammad, which is a copy from the pagan Arab before Islam. So don't say you are believing that the Bible is the word of Allah. I believe that the Quran says that, not me. Quran. Aren't you? Are you? My question is, hmm. so me the first that tells Allah's words sounding, I am the one who ref revealed the Bible and I am also the one who got it. Uh -huh. It have to say that exactly? Guys, it have to say that sentences. If you don't give me the sentences, that's it. They have to say, I am the one who revealed the Bible. And he have to say, I am the one who will collect it. But look what you just did, you idiot. You just got yourself busted. Here we go. You made a challenge, right? You are a donkey. Allah, he says, both as you say it. Both as you say it. Now what you will do, every, every Muslim will see that you are a certified idiot who do not know your book. All those chapters in the Quran speaking about Allah sending down the gospel and the Torah. Do you see it? Chapter 3, verse number 3. Very easy to remember. Now, we go to different verses in the Quran. Chapter 15, verse number 9. It says, Inna andalina dhikr wa inna lahu lahafizun. The Muslims, they lie in the translation and they use the word Quran. I can see it. Indonesian. Nowhere in the translation, nowhere in the Arabic it says Quran. You know how Quran is written in Arabic, right? Inna, inna nahnu nazzalna dhikra wa inna lahu lahafizun. 
no Quran. The Muslim they claim that this is a verse about the Quran. Okay, so what is the word there? Is a dhikr. The Muslim they claim that a dhikr is a Quran. Let us take the word a dhikr and do a little search in the Quran one more. Just to show you how we get them busted with no mercy. We will post the same word. <coughs> Read carefully. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزُّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ What? We wrote in the psalm after the message was given to Moses. But what is the word here? الذِّكْر So you see what is a ذِّكْر? A ذِّكْر is the book which is given to Moses. So why in the other verse translation they say this is Quran? This is exactly the same word. Let us go back. Huh? Do you see it? This is the word ad dhikr I will take a snapshot of it. Because you might not be a person who speaks Arabic, but at least you can compare between them, right? Okay, this is the word ad dhikr we send down a dhikr and the Muslim they translate it as Quran, which is false. No Quran here. This is a dhikr. Take a snapshot. All right. Now we go to the other verse and we will put the word together next to each other. This is the word a dhikr here. Take a snapshot. And here it says the message of Moses. <laughs> All right. And now what we will do, we will open the two images and they will put them next to each other. Is that fair, guys? The same word exactly. The same exact word. All right. This is the first sentence, and this is the second sentence. Be my witness. The one you see in the screen is the chapter number 21, verse number 15. The other verse is a chapter 15, verse number 9. Okay. So we will put chapter 15, verse number 9, next to this one. Is it exactly the same word? So why the Muslim they say this is Quran? Where it says Quran? This is the word dhikr and this is the word dhikr. Do you see it? But in chapter 15, Let me let me switch to the other uh, verse actually. Hold on. I'm showing you the same one. Give me a second. Switch the page. Okay, here. 105, chapter 21, 105. Let us read it back. Okay. And chapter 15, verse number 9. This is exactly the same word. This is a dhikr. And this is a dhikr. So why do you translate here the word a dhikr as Quran? Do you see how they lie? A dhikr is the book of Moses. According to the translation you see in the front of you, all what we need to do, we move this thing away. Hmm. Read. It says what? The book of Moses. What is that book? The Torah. So show me where Allah, he said he will reserve his book, which is the Torah and the Injil. Well, in this verse, it's mentioned the Torah for sure. Because inna we send down a dhikr. And the Muslim lie saying that in the translation saying that this is the Quran.
Do you see? Do you see Muslim? So this guy is making a challenge saying to you, show me where it says that the Quran says that. And they lie to you in the translation. They translate the word as dhikr as the Quran. But as you see, it cannot be the Quran because the Quran confirmed that the word, the, the book as dhikr, the book which is called as dhikr, is a book sent after. Let me show you again. Before we wrote the psalm after a dhikr. So what is written after and before? The psalm written after a dhikr. Do you see it? <laughs> so how the dhikr is a Quran? Right? Hmm. Sabah does not need a rest. Let me. Seven. Hey, no, you can go right now and you see in the Hebrew dictionary, you will see that you are stupid. First and last, you are not a true Christian. Sabbath, Sabbath means the day of rest. God, He finished. His a creation and he what he did in the Sabbath when we say the seventh day is a day of rest stupidity is amazing so anyway before this is wrote in, in, in Psalm after the message this is confirmed that what you are asking for is there right but the Muslim they lie to you in the translation and they say this is Quran. So they put the word Quran here. But in fact, in Arabic, there is no Quran. So when this when uh, when this man he says to you, show me where in the Bible, where in the Quran it says that Allah is sending the Bible and he will preserve it. The Bible, by the way, is a book of books. It's not one book. Right? The book of books. Not one book. All right? Do we have any Muslim have any comment? <clears throat> Anyone? And for the one who said that the, the, the Sabbath does not mean, uh, it means the seventh day is not the day of rest. It means the seventh day, yes, but it is the day of rest. This is why it's meant the seventh day. It is the day of rest. I mean, you. Uh, uh, some people, they are really funny and weird and, you know, they say stupid things. Go and read the book before you open your mouth. This is the purpose of Sabbath rest. The Hebrew word Sabbath literally means to seize. This is what the word means, literally. So the little kids who come here and say, oh, didn't say that. Uh, stop copying paste. Potatoes. Now we go back. Any Muslim have a respond? Anyone? So here we prove to you that the Quran have a contradiction. For how Allah, he says, he will preserve his book and the Muslim they make it above the Quran when the word a dhikr is not the Quran. How you make a dhikr a Quran when the Quran saying that a dhikr is written after you know uh, 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 before the, the, the psalm? <laughs> 
And you are the one who translated for us, saying this is the book of Moses. Read it. This is the dicker. Secondly, if we go back in the verse, chapter 3, verse number 3, where it says Allah is the one who sent the Torah and the Injil. So this edict he sent to us, Allah, he did not promise to uh, protect it. With the Quran full of verses saying, Allah, nobody can change his words. Here we go. La mubaddira li kalimatullah. Read it, all those verses. Allah will not allow anyone to change his word. Chapter 6, verse number 34. Huh? And none can alter the words of Allah. Okay, chapter 3, verse 3, it says, Allah, he sent down the Torah and the, and, and, and the gospel. Chapter 6, verse number 34 says, oh, Nobody can alter the word of Allah. Do you see the stupidity? When we say Allah, He is saying, None can alter the word of Allah. And the Quran is saying that Injil is the word of Allah. So what we will do now? <laughs> stupidity. It's amazing how stupidity it's work. If Allah, he said, I send the Torah and I send the gospel. And then Allah, he says, nobody can change the word of Allah. <laughs> you, you solve this problem for me. That's mean Allah is a liar. He's not a God. Because if he claim nobody can alter his word. And you Muslims are trying to convince us that Torah and the gospel are altered. That's mean Allah is a stupid liar. He did not keep his promise. Do you see it? Very simple. Let us continue with this idiot. Because, uh, you know, his, I mean, his video is just for a joke. And what we can do is Saturday, we're going to have some fun. If you find it, oh. not the new BM. Hold on, hold on. I just remember something. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I remember something. Forgive me, forgive me, guys. It. I remember something. If you find it, no, 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 go back, go back. Who was words around you? My question is. Okay, hold on. Somebody saying that the two words I showed they are not identical. He said one of uh, in the text he's saying saying the two words I show they are not identical. Okay, here we go. I will put them in the screen next to each other. <clears throat> Where is the guy who said not identical? How they are not in the, how they are not identical. You will say tashkil, you idiot. The tashkil is changed in the sentence, but this is the same word as dhikr. And actually, even the tashkil is the same. Here it says in the at the end there's a fatha, simply because before it it says nazalna. It's exactly the same word. A dhikr, a dhikr. Tashkir is just a change, depend in the location of the word. Stupidity is amazing. This is not the same word. You know what? Let me, let me, uh, 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 I will take another snapshot, make it small so we can get them closer to each other. Here we go. We will make it even more. Uh, let us size it. How big we can make it for you. This is not the same word. Huh? It's not? Where it's not? How it's not? Let me take a snapshot for this one and I will uh, size it. There's no different as a word. This is Tashkir, you eat it. And remember the Quran written without Tashkir anyway. You are a certified donkey. Here we go.
we will size this one uh, how we can put them together it's exactly the same word where is the guy who said it's not the same are you there what is the guy he said it's not the same hello what happened to this guy mr. not the same where are you did he take a nap it's a saying he will say to you Tashkil this is dependent on the location of the world it's exactly the same word Kasra or Fatha they say he will say to you here there's a Kasra this is the this is, but this is still the same word Kasra or Fatha a Dhikra or a Dhikri it's a saying <laughs> Stupidity is amazing. Anyway, yeah. Depending in the context. Okay, guys, a dhikr me reminder. Okay, no problem, guys. He, he, hold on, hold on. Let me take a snapshot of this guy. Just to show you how, how the Muslims, and the funny, he called himself the Messiah. Go change the name, you idiot. Don't insult my Lord here. Change your name and come back. Let me put what you just said for us so everybody can laugh with me. Read with me and see how the Muslims expose their own fraud. Stop lying. Dhikr me reminder. So why you translated Quran then? <laughs> so why you don't translate it as reminder? And here, let us say this is me in the reminder. Why he call it dhikr? A dhikr is not, in Arabic, it does not mean reminder. Dhikr is about, you know, you mention something in the book. It's called, this is what it's called. Can you tell me why, what, what it's mean, a zubur? You see, you are the one who choose the name for it. And this book came, it says here, before we wrote the psalm, we wrote the dhikr. So is the dhikr, it just means reminder. So what is the name of the book? <laughs> what is the book of Moses? It's called the dhikr. So just to go with you, how come when you say we are going to preserve the dhikr, you say this is the Quran, when he did not say the word Quran, according to you, he said the reminder. And the only place the Quran confirm what is the reminder is this verse. Because he's saying that we wrote, and I will go with the word you said, it's a reminder. And by the way, it's not. Because dhikr is, is, is a word mean mentioning. Mentioning, that's it. There's no reminder. Reminder is uh, you that care. That will make it a, a, a verb. Here, this is a name. So, uh, you mention something, whatever it is, and that is mentioned, or whatever is called a dhikr, is a book written after the book of Sam. Oh, sorry, uh, 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 before the book of Sam, this is what this book is written. So this book, for sure, must be the book of Moses. And as you see, even you Muslim, you translate it as Moses. So why in the other verse you change it, you make it the Quran? Where it says Quran? Where it says Quran? When this is the only place where the Quran confirm what Allah he meant by a dhikr. It is a book written before the psalm is written. Is the Quran written before the psalm? So they try to defend desperately and they get themselves busted whatever you call it you call it dhikr you call it metr you call it fetr you call it chatter i don't care but the quran says that this is a book written before the psalm 
Whatever Allah consider as a dhikr is written before the psalm. So how you Muslim translate falsely say this Quran? Hmm? The answer is very simple. And as long as the Quran says nobody can change the word of Allah, is a dhikr from the word of Allah? Is the Torah from the word of Allah, which is called supposedly a dhikr? Is the Injil from the word of Allah? Chapter 3, verse number 3 say yes. It is the word of Allah. So all your Quran is nothing but a chain of contradiction and stupidity. How in one hand Allah, he says, nobody can change the word of Allah. In the other hand, he says, the Muslim, you say to us, oh, the Torah is corrupted. But Allah is saying, he is the one who sent the Torah. Oh, the gospel is corrupted. But Allah, he says, he is the one who sent the gospel. This is why we say stupidity is amazing. The Quran itself is a self-destruct book. It's written by an idiot who do not know what he's talking about. He forgot what he say. Let us continue with this guy. So me the first the we, we, dance we did our <laughs> last words sounding I am the one who ref refilled the Bible and I am also the one who got it stop I just remember something I mean how many things I need to remember unbelievable <laughs> you see just to show you how stupid Islam is the Quran says that the one who will collect the Quran is Allah Did the Quran say that? <laughs> yes. Who is the one who created the Quran? Uthman. Inna <laughs> jamahu wa Quranahu. This is why this edict is saying to me, show me where Allah he says he sent down the gospel and he will collect it. Okay, hold on. Did Allah collect the Quran or Uthman? A question for all Muslims. Allah said for us to collect the Quran and to recite the Quran. Who is the one who collected the Quran? I will give you three names. You choose one of them. Ivanka Trump. John Travolta. Uthman ibn Affan, which one you choose? Any Muslim can give me the correct answer. The Muslims are thinking because it's very hard question. Ivanka Trump, John Travolta, or Uthman. The Muslims are thinking now. They are searching Google. Uthman Trump. Let me ask Zakir Naik. Uh, Zakir Naik, which one he collect the Quran, man? Zakir uh, uh, Uthman ibn Affan, Ivanka Trump, or John Travolta? Christian Prince. First of all, it's very easy question. And for me, I do not need to search in Google. I can give you the answer very easy. It was Ivanka. Uh, what? I, I mean, it was uh, Uthman. Uh, but I wish it was Ivanka. So it's going to be very beautiful. Uh, <clears throat> what? So the Quran saying Allah, he will collect the Quran. And then we find that Allah did not collect the Quran. And this guy is saying to, saying to me, so me, Christian Prince, where Allah, he said, I and have to be sounding like this. Did you, did you hear what he said? It have to be sounding like that. You cannot choose anything. It have to sound one word by word. You cannot just give him a verse saying that he will represent. No, no, no. It have to be sounding like this. Read, read, read. I'm unbelievable. Question is, so me the first that tells our last words sounding. I am the one who ref refilled the Bible and mm. I am also the one who got it. Mm. 
if so, you find it okay i just showed you allah saying he is the one who recite the quran and he will collect the quran so why you muslims you follow the quran of uthman where is the quran collected by allah and by the way the quran of uthman is not exist too where is the quran of uthman nobody have it nobody have it the muslim today they have a book it's called a book according to hafs according to who to hafs and we made the videos about it to show you that Hafs is nothing but a fraud. If we go in the Quran, if you have any Arabic Quran in your house, if you are Indonesian and uh, Saudi, they give you an Arabic Quran, you will find this page, page A. What page A saying? This is a picture taken by me. You know, I, I was making a video all the days. I don't have the Quran here with me where I am right now to take a picture again for it. Uh, clear more clear picture this was a video actually it says here kutiba had al mushaf this mushaf is written according start from here let us make it red <clears throat> the recitation of hafs the tale of hafs the son of sulayma Ibn al mughira al-Asadi, al-Kufi. According to the reading or reciting of Asim, Ibn al-Nujud, al-Kufi, al-Tabi, according to Abi Abdul Rahman, Abdullah ibn Habib al-Sulma, according to Uthman ibn Affan, according to Ali ibn Abi Talib, according to Zayd ibn Thabit, uh, and According to Abi Ben Kaab, uh, 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 Ben Kaab, according to the Prophet. Okay, hold on. Where is the Quran? The Muslim they say to you, this book you have, it's according to John. Where is the book of Jesus? All of this is according to, and none of them is according to Allah. Notice, none of this is according to Allah. Where is Allah? According to Hafs, and we, if you go right now and search, you will find that Hafs accused by the Muslim Sunni, that is a fraud. This is why you will not find one hadith of Hafs is accepted. It's not da'if. Hadith of Hafs is not da'if. It is totally garbage, rejected, for he's a liar. His father is the same. So this is Hafs. The last two you got the Quran from, both of them are accused to be fraud. According to Hafs and according to Asim. Asim is his stepfather. And both they've been accused to be a fraud. Both of them. This is why their hadith is rejected totally, not da'if. Da'if because da'if means accepted. Da'if, da'if hadith. Many Muslims, they like you saying da'if. It's not accepted. That's a lie. It's given the rank of da'if because it's accepted, not because it is rejected. There's a video made by uh, a person, his name, uh, Sheikh Hamza. Let me see if I can find you the video. <clears throat> Sheikh Hamza, he got the Abdul busted. And he said clearly, and I quote him, the argument of the Aif hadith is the Aif argument. Hmm, here we go. Search for this hadith, this video. The hadith is weak. The Aifa brother. <laughs> Watch it. He explained to you that when they say the Aifa, it's not rejected. They're not flunk. It pass. I'm quoting him. It's called the Aifa because it pass. And then a Muslim, when, in order to make, you know, to make you say, oh, I don't accept this hadith, they say to you, this is the Aifa. Anything they say to them, they say the Aifa. But the Aifa is accepted. <laughs> Let us go back to this idiot. 
So where is the Quran which Allah will collect, Mr. Insan? Did Allah collect the Quran? Can you recite for me the chapter of uh, breastfeeding for adult? <laughs> Not the new BMW car is for you. I'm really sure you cannot solve that first. No, I cannot. I just did, actually. The fifth. Fifth. Can you show me the forces that Jesus was born <laughs> on 25th December and a command to celebrate it? Can you show me the verse that Muhammad, he was born in Monday? In the day of barber shop? Can you show me the verse where Allah, he says, celebrate the birthday of Muhammad? I mean, you are silly and stupid and you are acting like a teenage kid who do not know what to say. Can you show me Jesus, you born the 25th of December? Uh, my friend, first of all, uh, we celebrate the occasion, not the day, because the day will never come back anyway. Secondly, if we ask the Muslims, the birthday of Muhammad this year was when date? What date? Guys, Islam as a religion of they are strict, supposedly. Strict. You will find that their prophet birthday move. Once he will be in January. Then once he will be in October. And then once he will be in November. And once he will be in August. And once he will be in July. And once he will be in March. And once he will be in May. In which date is your prophet is born? If we go right now and we search, what is the birth date of a prophet Muhammad for this year? When his birthday will be? Let me do it in front of you. Give me a second. Uh. Oh boy. Ta 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 Okay, guys, here we go. Prophet Muhammad, I open a Muslim website, and this is their calendar. You can change the date, like from chat from the year 2015 to 2025. Okay. The prophet birthday observance all right year 2015 it was january 3rd at saturday in the same year 2015 it was december 24th you're a prophet he have two birthday in the same year Thanks for the wrong calendar. Okay, hold on. How he was in the same year in January 23rd, sorry, January 3rd, and then he became, his birthday became in December 24th. And how in year 2016, it was Monday, December 12th, and then in, in, in 2017, it became a, uh, a Friday, December 1st. And then in 2018, it became November 21. And in 2019, it became November 9. <laughs> and in the year 2020, it became October 29. <laughs> 21 is October 19. In 22 is October 8. In uh, 23 is a September 27. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a bunch of jokers. What is that, man? Your prophet is born in every month? You remind me of a family kid he used to call us. One of my relatives, his son, he called us. He say, hey, uncle, come and join. It's my birthday. I say to him, but you have a birthday last week. Still, you this week, you have a birthday too. I told my mom to make cake. Okay? Okay, so his birthday is next week too, and the week after, here we go. 
This is Muhammad. Every week there is a birthday. And you are asking the Christian, where is the verse Jesus said? Okay, where Muhammad, he says, celebrate my birthday, show me. Where Allah, he said to you, Muslims celebrate the birthday of Muhammad. Neither Muhammad, neither Allah said that to you. And how you can celebrate a birthday by following a stupid calendar made by Muhammad, as you see, how this calendar function. Ramadan, one month is going to be in July, the other month is going to be in December, the other month is going to be in October, the other month is going to be in August. What is this? He could not choose for you a right calendar? I know because there is a living day, my friend, but this is mean you chose the wrong calendar. You see, no, this is not the difference, it's not the problem. The Jews, they have the moon, the lunar calendar too, but they don't have this garbage. You see, somebody saying, because there is a living dif day different. No, this is not the reason. As an example, the Jews, they celebrate every 15 of Nisan. 15 of Nisan. Okay, but Nisan does not come in July sometime and it come in August sometime and come in December sometime it come always in Nisan are you getting my point so the Jews they use the lunar calendar but the Muslim they do not use the lunar calendar no more they use the lunar calendar of Hijra and by doing that they missed up the whole calendar so now their calendar is moving like a monkey and this is why we see this mess Do you understand? Muhammad, he followed the pagan before him. And the Jews, they used the lunar calendar too. But the Muhammadan, they changed the calendar system. So it became movable. And this is why you see this mess in front of you. How your prophet is born in July, yet he is born in December, yet he is born in October, Yet he's born in September. Either you are crazy or your prophet was born every few weeks. Right? The Jews use lunar calendar. Yeah, exactly, Mr. Abdul, who is... Uh, is uh, yeah, the Jews use lunar calendar, but they correct their calendar, not like your stupid prophet. The Jews, as I just said to you, the Jews, they have a festival in the 15th of Nisan. But 15th of Nisan, come in Nisan. <laughs> Nisan will never become July. Do you see how silly you are, Mr. Farad? This guy in the screen, he don't speak fluent English. My friend, what does this have to do with the fluent English? We need a fluent answer. No, he can speak English. And who said that my English is a fluent? Somebody told you that my English is a fluent? It's not. I make a lot of mistakes when I'm reading English too. What does this have to do with this? Here we are debating knowledge, not language. All right? We don't debate you know, so what if his English not so good? Who said my English is good too? What does this have to do with our topic? Focus, focus, be smart. All right? And don't call me bro, you are a false person. Go change your name. This guy, he changed his name every two seconds. The bro, you are my bro? No, I don't brew the devil. And the lunar calendar, you know, we can go, there's many occasions in the, in the Old Testament about the festivals. The Jews, they have festivals. You can, okay, I will do the same in front of everybody. If I say uh, the Jewish uh, holiday, Jewish holiday, give me a second. The Passover festival in the 15th of Nisan, the Jewish Nisan is always come in the month of Nisan. 
and the 15 Nissan will be always 15 Nissan. <laughs> it's not going to be. <laughs> Unbelievable. I mean, stupid is amazing. By the way, even in Arabic, we use the word Nissan because this is not Arabic word. You know, everything we have is coming from the Aramaic language, including even the Hebrew. Hebrew is born from the Aramaic. So Nisan is a, is, a, is a name of a month. And the 15th of Nisan is what the Jews celebrate every year. And it does not change. Nisan is going to be Nisan. And it's not going to be August. It's not going to be uh, uh, January. It's not going to be. It's going to be in the middle of the spring. And it's going to be the same date exactly, 15th of Nisan. Yet they are using the lunar calendar. So what the Jews they do, they knew that their lunar calendar is not accurate. So every few day, a few years, they added these to correct the calendar, as simple as that. The same as even in the sun calendar, it's not perfect too. So we have something that's called the lab year. What is the lab year? You add a day to February. Because both calendars are not perfect. But the lunar calendar is way more short in days. So that what the Jews they do, they correct those days. They correct their calendar. And the date can be fixed and not a change like Muhammadan, where we can find the birth of Muhammad goes in September and sometime in January and sometime in July and sometime is in March. All right? Let us continue with this, Abdul. Are you done, Abdul? Listen, Prince, if you find it, a new series BMW is for you to the sixth. If you can memorize just a seat of the Bible back and forth, mm. and you can tell the exact place of the dots mm. and commas mm. a grand price bmw okay i have a challenge for you we will go live on air me and you i will recite a chapter from the uh, bible and you recite a chapter from the quran and you choose for me a chapter to recite and i choose for you a chapter to recite and look what he will say guys listen carefully what he said is for you prince Christian Prince, mm. I'm surely mm. you cannot do it. Mm. This is why, what for you still believe your own holy books? Ah, so if you cannot recite by the comma, etc., why you believe in it? Ah. Hold on, you just remind me something. As I know your prophet, he used to forget the Quran. Let us see the hadith. Give me a second. I need to find it. <laughs> remember, Muslims, the one who cannot remember the Quran or the, his book, he cannot be a good believer. Did he say that? Yes, he said that, not me. Or. Sunan Abi Dawood, narrated by etc. etc. The Messenger of Allah recited Yahya, sub narrate. Okay, he said, Sometime, and Miswar said, I prayed along with Allah Messenger, and I witnessed that he recited the Quran during the prayer and omitted something. Omitted what? Something, i.e., some verses. He did not recite. <laughs> a man he said to him Muhammad a potato Muhammad Rasulullah huh you omitted such and such verses hello <laughs> the message of Allah said why you did not remind me of it 
Do you see the stupid donkey? He's challenging me. And this is supposedly the quiz of faith. If you can remember the verses by the comma and by the etc. and by the location, that means you are a faithful person. If you cannot, that means you are a fraud. This is your prophet, not only forgetting the Quran, the guy he jumped many verses. <laughs> Muhammad, where do you go? Muhammad, hey, for prophet. And did Muhammad he say, No, I did not omit it? Did he say, No, I did this? I say that? No, he agreed. Why well, you don't remind me? And then they say, oh, we thought those verses are maybe, he abrogate them maybe. No, he agree, you know, why you don't remind me? You're a prophet of Allah, you omitted such a verse. He told him even what the verses, he did not like say just such a, he told him, he, they don't mention what the verse is, you omitted such and such verses, such and such verse, which means there's many of them. In different hadith, let me find the other hadith. Let us see. Um, let me find you the other reference. It's very frustrating, by the way, to, I mean, I don't want to say debate, but to, to speak to people who they are ignorant. They don't know the religion, what you can do, which make it hard for you, you know. <clears throat> Let me show you the reference, maybe we can find from Sahih al-Bukhari. Here we go. This is Sahih al-Bukhari. I heard a man, Muhammad, he was walking, you know, or whatever, going somewhere in the mosque. He heard a man reciting the Quran in the mosque. And he said, Muhammad said voluntarily, May Allah bestow his mercy on him, who, this man, who was reciting the Quran, as he has reminded me of such and such verses which... Uh, uh, of such and such a surah. A Muslim, he might say to you, he just said, remind me. He didn't say he forgot. Okay, let's show you more proofs. You see, all of those. Read carefully. Because I know what they say, you know, I know that all the executors will come. Oh, hold on, we're going to show you Al-Bukhari, not this one. We skipped it. This is Al-Bukhari. The Prophet heard the man reciting the Quran in the mosque and he said, May Allah bestow his mercy upon him. No doubt he made me remember such and such a verses and such and such surahs. Surahs, he forgot surahs, which I dropped my, from my memory. You see, even the translation is false. What drop? It says I forgot. Do you see it? So you are saying to me that you can recite the Quran, but your prophet himself, he forget the Quran. But guess here what happened? That proved that Muhammad is a fraud. And please save the reference so later you can post them to Muslims. If we go in the Quran, Allah, he promised Muhammad that we will recite your Quran and you will never forget. In chapter 87, verse number 6, it says, سُنِقْرُؤُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى We are going to declare the Quran to you, and you shall not forget. Do you see it? Okay. How Allah, he says to Muhammad, you will never forget Quran. And then Quran is forgotten by Muhammad. You know what I mean?
Somebody saying how you can remember something you do not know. If you forgot so, he know. You are really stupid for sure. I mean, look at this smart Muslim. If the if Muhammad is the one who wrote the Quran for you, how he forget the Quran? He don't know. He don't know the Quran now. So who the Quran came from? Who? <laughs> Stupidity is amazing again. How he, how he can forget something he don't know? So the Quran came to you from who? Not from Muhammad? And your Prophet Muhammad saying that he forgot the Quran. He is saying that, not me. So what we would do, Muhammad, now? Are you going to accuse him to be stupid? Are you accusing your Prophet to be stupid when he said, I forgot such and such verses and such and such chapters? So how he say, I forgot them if you don't know them? And how Muhammad do not know the Quran? So how you Muslim learn the Quran if you Muhammad himself do not know the Quran? How this is can be if, uh, you see the Quran made it clear that Allah will give him Quran and you will not forget it and then Muhammad admitted that he for he, he forgot not only verses chapters from the Quran no we cannot say abrogated because he said I forgot them hello he said I forgot not abrogated Abrogation is a different story. So if Muhammad been promised by his God, you will not forget the Quran. And then Muhammad, he says, okay, thank you for reminding me with those verses and those chapters which I dropped from my memory as the Muslim translate line. And as you see, this is Sahir Bukhari. Can they say this is weak? So this idiot is a challenge in me to recite when his prophet cannot recite. So let us say you made a challenge for me and Christian Prince, he uh, he is like he recited a few verses and then he stopped. He forgot. That's it. Oh, that is mean the Christian Prince. He don't have a no. It's a miracle. We can recite the Quran. The only one who learned how to recite the Quran, you idiot, is the children. So you have to force them when they are children to keep repeating. You beat them until they die sometime. And this is why you cannot make someone who... Okay, this is my change to the Muslims. Can you find me one Muslim who converted to Islam as an adult and he can recite the whole Quran by memory? You cannot. Only children. Children, when they are young, you keep beating them. You send them to the madrasa. They teach them two things, terrorism and recite the Quran. And he keeps shaking his head, shaking his head, repeating the same verse, repeating the same verse, repeating the same verse. Okay, move to the second verse, the second verse, the third. So he spent the first beautiful year of his life in memorizing a stupid book. But yet not the, nobody, none of them understand the Quran, but they memorize it. But this is what is done for kids. This is why you cannot find an adult who became a Muslim, not somebody he was memorizing the Quran since he was a child. He can memorize the whole Quran. Why? Because when you are old, that's it. So for us as a Christian, we don't force our children to memorize the Bible because this is stupid. What we want from them is to understand the word of God. What God he wants from them, not memorizing words in a language you don't speak. Imagine I teach my son, he is an Indonesian, I teach him to memorize the Quran, but he don't understand what he is memorizing. So instead of being proud about memorizing, what about being proud about knowing your book? You do not know your book. Even your prophet, you do not know what the book. Even your prophet, he forgot the Quran. And not only that, my friend, do you memorize the Quran already? No, you don't. Okay, this is my challenge to Mr. Shish Kebab Hamas, Dr. whatever his name. I want you to recite for me the chapter of a breastfeeding for adult 10 times. It's a challenge. Who is a Muslim want to recite for us the chapter because I want to print it and I want to put it back in the Quran? Huh? Who is the one who want to recite for us those verses? 
it was sent down in the Quran. Ten known suckling made made marriage and lawful. This is by the way, this is false translation. Doesn't say made marriage. This is false. Afterward, we're abrogated by five. Okay, where, where it says where is the verse that says they are abrogated, and where is the five abrogated verses? We don't have them. Then Allah Messenger died. Those words were among what was recited in the Quran. Okay, where are they? They are recited in the Quran. Where we can find them? It was revealed in the Quran. Ten clear sakalin. I like sakalin. It's my hobby actually. I did it actually. I applied already to convert to Islam so I can or in order to join the Sakalin club of Allah. Especially the one who will suckle me is a woman with big boobs. MashaAllah, Alhamdulillah. Suckling. God, He make verses ordering Muslim men to suckle boobs. And those women, they are not even their wives. They are not even the neighbors. They are strangers. And let me tell you, the Muslim, they claim that the reason those verses disappear from the Quran because a goat ate them. Because of what? A goat ate them. I believe that this hadith is not a true. The one who ate them is Aisha or Hafsa or the Muslim themselves because they are ashamed of those verses. They decide to delete them. Look, it says here, the verses Aisha, she said, the verses of stoning of a, and the breastfeeding for adult, breast for, breastfeeding for adult, adult, is that a pimp town? Ten time was revealed. Let me make a verse about a breastfeed for adult. Bismillah, suckle them and suckle their nipples. Suckle their nipples and don't bite it hard. Suckle their nipples and enjoy it ten times and don't play with it. May Allah suckle you. The Kabir. Ten times. I want I wanna hear those verses. I insist. And then those ten verses became five verses. Where we can find the five verses? And look what the Muslim they say as a comment. This is a comment. This is not a hadith. The verses were abrogated recitation. What? Abrogated and recitation? Why you abrogate them and recitation? <laughs> what the heck? 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 Hey, Mas Eddie, are you are you a Muslim, my friend, from Indonesia? Did you decide to leave Islam, my friend? Mas Eddie, say yes, my friend. Say yes and leave this stupidity. This is a stupid religion. It's not good for you. Islam is an insult for every Indonesian. Islam is a religion made by the Arab like me to control you. This is Arab made religion, white supremacist. They want to control you by their religion. This is the purpose of Islam to take over your land, over your government, and the Arab control you. And as you see, what kind of a good God is God who order women to give their breast to a stranger? And what is the purpose of this? And what why it is ten times? What about nine times? Let me make a verse about it. <clears throat> He's out of Islam a few days ago. Good for him. Good for him. Okay, happy for you, my friend. Uh, <clears throat> there's a verse in the Quran that says, I turn my head up and down, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it, turn it around, and all what I can see, a bunch of nipples around me, 
I circled one, the second one, and the third one was following me, and all what I can see, no milk in the nipples of thee. I suck again, 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 and Allah, he told me to do it ten times, and I have to do as he order me. I turn my lips up and down, and I was suckling like a clown, and all what I can see, a bunch of idiots believe in such a thee. What is this, man? Suckling verses for adult. And now we knew why they are gone. You ate them, not the goat. Do you really believe that the goat ate them? I don't believe in this story. And look, look at the funny story. I actually saying that the verses of stoning to death and breastfeeding for adult 10 times revealed and the, and the paper was under my pillow. Okay. But Muhammad is dead in the pillow. Muhammad is dead. The mess, when the messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death. And a time sheep came and ate it. But hold on. So Muhammad, he died. He, they let him alone with the goat. Because remember, the bed of Aisha is the same bed of Muhammad. So how the goat get in the bedroom of Muhammad? When a man like this, he is a king, he became a king, he's a prophet. Imagine how many people around the house, around inside the house, and now the goat is alone with the prophet? Nah, nah. And the prophet is dead. And what the goat do? The goat should jump in the top in the on the top of the bed. And the prophet is dead. And the goat, she target the prophet pillow. But she cannot get the pillow moved unless she have to move the prophet first. She flipped the prophet. Meh. And the goat pushed the prophet from the pillow. He fell in the, in, the, in, in the floor. And then the goat, she grabbed the book and she flipped the pages and she shoes only the verses of a breastfeeding for adult. I mean, from the whole Quran, why she choose those verses? Is it for she? Look like this goat is educated and she knew how to recite the Quran very well. So she flipped the pages, page after page, you know, she, she flipped them by her tongue, by the way, in case you do not know, just to remind you. Hmm? She flipped the Quran, page after page, page after page, page. Ah, finally, she found the breastfeeding for adult. And now she start eating them. She ate the whole chapter. And now the chapter of a breastfeeding for adult, the most beautiful chapter ever made by Allah, is eaten by a goat. And they say to you, the Quran is preserved. Well, I want you to recite for me the verses of a breastfeeding for adult. And I want you to teach us how to do it because I'm very naive. I'm not sure how to do it, brother. And by the way, in case you see this goat anywhere, please call the Islamic police of Saudi Arabia because she is wanted. Because we are trying to get back the verses of stoning to death and breastfeed for adult ten times and five times because she ate them both, obviously. And don't worry, I'm expecting the verses to be until now in her stomach because Allah, he promised that nobody can destroy his word. So how the goat can eat it? No way. She swallowed it, yes, but it's still there. Obviously. And you know what? When I check the story of this goat, I find it very fishy that this goat was in the bedroom of the Prophet. So who was living in this room? Prophet, the goat, and Aisha. Huh. I thought the Prophet, he have one wife at the house. What the goat is doing there? Oh, that will be explained in different hadith. If you go in the hadith, you will find Aisha saying, not me. That the Prophet, he imagined himself having sex with his wives, but in fact, he did not. And now the existence of that goat there may be explaining some issues. Read with me. Aisha, she said, the Prophet continued for such a, such a period of time, imagining that he had boom, boom 
with his wife but in fact it was not his wives okay so who was it who was it I'm just thinking who was in the room additional to Aisha hmm. Hmm. the prophet imagined himself having sex with Aisha and his wives in fact he did not and then the goat was in the room hmm. ah maybe the goat is like a the waitress for the house you never know maybe she's a servant like you know she bring she bring books to the prophet you know from the library you know don't like don't go with your mind in uh, uh, the prophet he imagined himself having sex but in fact he did not so what he was doing exactly i mean he was imagining sex with who you see he's not sleeping this guy is awake this guy is awake Okay, he's imagining himself having sex with who? And if this person, the Muslim, agreed that he was bewitched, how he can be trusted to be a prophet? As you see, this guy imagines stupid things. How we can trust that he saw an angel? Angel squeeze him. Angel squeeze him. Why? He want to get mayonnaise? Okay, after squeezing three times, what happened? Muhammad before squeezing and after squeezing, nothing changed. Still stupid. The whole story does not make any sense. And then you see an Edith says to a Christian prince, can recite the Quran? Your prophet can recite the Quran. Look, 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 hold on. You remind me of something. I forgot. You're a prophet, brother. Uh, <clears throat> In order to cover his stupidity and his lies, that he cannot recite the same verses twice correctly, he claimed that Allah gave him the Quran in seven ways. Seven ways. Why Allah did not give Musa seven Torah? Why Allah did not give Isa seven Gospel? Why Allah did not give David seven uh, books? Why Allah did not give Abraham seven books? Why only Muhammad he need the Quran in seven ways? Because my people are not capable of doing it. Simply, the liars of Muhammad was covering his ass. This guy, he cannot recite the same verse twice correctly. So they say to him, Prophet, you did not say that uh, the same last time. He said, oh, I did not tell you. Uh, Allah, he gave it to me in seven ways. Allah gave you the Quran in seven ways. Can you recite the Quran to me for seven ways? Your Prophet said, my people are not capable of doing it. Read it. Which means if you, if you Muslims have Quran, only one Quran recitation, that means you are missing the whole show. You're a prophet saying, my people are not capable. They cannot do it. Are you accusing your prophet that you can do it and your prophet was a liar? Do you see it? My people cannot do it. Here is a story about two Muslims fighting because Muhammad he recited the Quran to them in different ways. <laughs> Read this story. This story is funny, by the way. Uh, somebody saying, "Yeah, this is a good question." Actually, look, R Richard here. He have a smart question for you guys. I don't know if you saw it. Let me let me put him in the screen. Richard said, "So." The goat ate the, the verses in the seven Quran. <laughs> good one, good one, good one. I will make an admin, man. Just wait. Yeah, the guys, if if the Quran is in re, seven recitation, you have seven Quran. So the goat ate the chapter of a breastfeeding from one Quran. What about the other Quran? And this is what I'm saying to you. It's a very suspicious. The story is very suspicious because read with me, brother. Brother, read with me. As long that the, the, the verse of its, uh, uh, breastfeeding for adult brother was eaten by the goat. That's mean the goat she was targeting those verses because there are there's seven Quran. You, you know what I'm saying, brother? As long the Quran is came in seven Quran, seven Quran, seven reading. Okay, the goat ate how many of them? 
If you say to me the seven, that means the goat, she opened seven books and she flipped to the same page and she eat the same verses. That's very fishy. Obviously, this goat was sent by the Jews. Let us explain the Jews. This goat was sent by the Jews. She was educated by the Shabbat intelligence department. She read Arabic very well. And she knew where to find even the verses. So she flipped the first book. She ate it. She go to the second Quran. She ate it. Seven Quran. So she targeted seven Quran and she ate seven Quran. May Allah bless her. And no wonder. Look at her belly, my brother. Look at her belly, how big it is. Seven, she ate seven Quran. I mean, how in the world anyone can believe such a mad, stupid religion? Don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you are new. And if you are already subscribed, don't forget to unsubscribe. Because according to Muhammad teaching, Allah will give you a blessing if you do that. For Allah, he erased the bad deed by a good deed you do, and he give you double deeds. So let us do this, brother. Subscribe, and subscribe, subscribe, and then Allah will bless you. Because if you subscribe to Christian Prince, Allah is upset. Then you unsubscribe to Christian Prince. Allah will double your deeds. So you are a winner. By the end of the day, you will have your bank account full of money. <laughs> what a stupid religion. All right, guys, I want to say thank you for being here. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And uh, you can uh, join us in Patreon if you like uh, to join. You don't have to donate, by the way, in Patreon. You can just join so you can be updated about our post. And for sure, we appreciate those who support us in our mission to save the Muslims from their cult and the false prophet Muhammad. We love the Muslims and we will never hate them. And Indonesian people, they have a special, special, uh, you know, work from me. This is why actually I'm going live on air very early in the morning so I can be with the Indonesian, even though I know that most of America, they are still asleep. But for me, saving those beautiful people in Indonesia, which we love very much, is very important. We will never, don't ever believe them when they say to you, the Christian, they hate us. We don't. Our Lord, the Messiah, he ordered us to love you. He said, love even those who curse you. So which means even if you curse me, the Messiah said to me, love them. And in order for me to belong to him, I have to follow his teaching. So a Christian who hate a Muslim, he is not being a Christian. A Christian who don't love Muslims, he is not being a Christian. A Christian who don't tell the truth to Muslims, he is not being a Christian. Which means love is not about giving you a hug, my friend. It's about showing you the truth. And the Lord, the Messiah, he said, the truth will set you free. I am the truth. I am the truth, the Lord, he said. And here we are to deliver for you the truth. We are not making fun of you as a Muslim. We are making fun of the liar, the devil, Muhammad. And be my witness. Can you find anything I said is not in the screen? Anything I showed you is not from their books? All from their books. All from even their translation. All from their own words. And yet, they cannot come to a very a little, little tiny smart intellect conversation. Because they are following a fraud. And this is what happens when you follow a false prophet. It doesn't matter how smart you are, you will look like a fool. Join us, subscribe, and may the Lord bless you. And I will see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false. And my love to all Indonesian, Muslims, and Christians, Indian in India, uh, uh, all people in the world, Muslims in Africa, we love you, my friend, and we care for you. Christ is Lord, and in Him we trust. See you soon.